Hey there, Forge Jetsons. Now dig on this. I talked a lot even last week about how projects can be a great way to grow your skills, but the amount of time a project takes is pretty daunting. What might be more attractive and doable is a side quest, a break from the main story where you grind out some experience and upgrade your gear. The goal of an art skill side quest is something you can reasonably complete in an afternoon. And just like a side quest in a game, we'll have one, two, and three star completion bonuses. I'll get things started for us, and I'll actually do these to follow along with and share my experience as we go. As much as I have spent years learning art and trying my best to help others, may it never be said I'm not trying as hard as I can to keep learning no matter what. And this gives me an opportunity to upgrade my understanding along with you. If you like this kind of thing, we can do it a lot more. Okay. The subject of this side quest is big, flightless birds. We're talking two legs, long neck, maybe looking a little like a dinosaur. In fiction, we've got plenty of cool birds like this. Big Bird, Chocobo, the Horse Claws from Nausicaa, Roadrunner. All right, Roadrunner's like the Velociraptors from Jurassic Park, as in he reads way bigger than he seems. There's Kevin, Expresso, Overdrive Ostrich, but in order to do a nice, proper study, it's even better if we start with the real birds those creatures were inspired by. That's right, I'm talking about ratites. Not to be confused with rat mites, which are tall, upside down rats that can fly. Ratites have regional variants depending on the continent. There's ostriches, emus, cassowaries, and rias? Rees? Rias. Oh, rias. Also in this group are kiwis, and we'll give them the day off. Along with photo references, I'm really interested in pictures of these birds' skeletons so we know how they're built. And, I'll probably watch videos of ostriches for like an hour. That's a good thing. Now that I have some reference collected, I can start studying. What's always struck me about birds is how deceptive their makeup is. Thanks to a bunch of fluffy feathers and elegant feathers, it's surprising to see just how proportionally similar birds can be. Look at a finch, a chicken, and an owl skeleton next to each other. Three birds that seem really different with feathers on. Kinda surprising, right? On most birds, the long neck and long legs are pretty obfuscated by feathers, but on ratites, those gams are on glorious display. Can't believe I put that in a video. Their necks are obviously much longer, and the heads skew a bit smaller. Of course, the legs size up to accommodate the weight of the larger bird and the speeds that they can run at. Did you know that ostriches are the fastest land bird, and emus are the rudest? Look at this absolute Muppet behavior from an admittedly captive emu. Very cool birds. Cassowaries are considered to be the most dangerous. Yikes. Obviously these birds can't fly, but despite the way that the emu looks, they do have wings. Buffalo wings. The ostriches have huge wings with a ton of plumage that sort of cup around their entire body. The cassowaries and emu's wings are like tiny raptor hands that are barely noticeable. These birds rely on their dinosaur-like feet and claws for defense. And the emu has got to be popular with Gen Z for pulling off that middle part on their feathers. Speaking of the feet, while cassowaries have those three toes sort of like a dinosaur, check out the ostrich over here with one long skinny foot-like toe and a side toe for stabilization. Pretty cool, Mr. Guy. I'm studying a few different things here. The skeleton alone, the gesture of these birds in motion, and finally a constructed model of their innate shapes. A nice three-step flow to a study is to one, trace an image right out, two, redraw the image off to the side, and then three, Draw it again, either from a different angle, or without looking at your reference. Oh hey! We've already gotten one star on our side quest from studying our source material and getting an understanding for them. Now we can embark on our second by playing with the new information we've digested and putting together a character concept. I was immediately drawn to the concept of an alternative to the homing pigeon. Instead of carrying small messages over the air, a homing emu could deliver large amounts or heavy amounts of mail over land. We're borrowing bits of the ostrich for our fantasy creature, but honestly, I love the tiny little arms and the fuzzy head and neck of the emu too much not to use them for our base. The emu will have a set of saddlebags and some extra armor pieces. Why are we adding those? That's a surprise tool that can help us later. Here on our second star, I want to translate what I've learned into a character concept. I won't spend a ton of time cleaning up the piece and making it look pretty, because we basically have everything we need for our third star, which is extra credit. We started in the unknown with new material, we steered toward our comfort zone in the middle, and we're out of the comfort zone again. I'm going to try and make a physical model 
of our homing emu. Now this is not my forte at all, but I have to say after spending a lot of time recently struggling with finicky 3D software, it's really fulfilling to try and make something by hand. There are a lot of things that I'm trying here for the first time, so I'm not trying to be perfect. First, I cut up a plastic vitamin bottle for the body, not find the wooden dowels I thought I bought that I had specifically in mind for this project, and then I start to build up the shape with wood, wire, and foil. While I am going to use some clay here, I'm using a lot of other materials as well. The hope is that once everything is put together, Mod Podge and Primer will even everything out. Amazon accidentally sent me a duplicate of this LBX model, so I'm using some of its pieces for the plating on the feet and head. Wrap some clay around the legs, shave it off, put it in the toaster oven until those drumsticks are nice and crispy. It's okay, we'll cover all the burns with paint. For our feathers, I've got some very thin EVA foam and will cover the body from the back towards the neck. This might not turn out exactly photorealistic, but it should at least have the feel of something from the Little Big Planet or Tearaway universe at the worst. For the head, I build up thin layers of clay at a time so I don't accidentally mush the whole face around at once. For the saddle, I cut a bit of mailing tube, appropriate, and layer some thin foam over it. For the saddlebags, I fold and cut more foam and add air dry clay for the bulk. Hopefully once this is painted, it will all look like the same texture. Time for Mod Podge, a giant mess, please don't look at it, primer, and finally, paint. So we've gained our third star by completing the model. How did that necessarily turn out? Well, full disclosure, in the interest of getting this video out as soon as I possibly could, this is really an incomplete paint job. I think also dealing with the Mod Podge might have added a couple of areas where uh, detail's a little bit harder to get in, or it just looks sort of globby even with thin la layers of paint. This is basically two base coats of paint, and I'd love to come back in and add some detail and things like that. But really, the goal with our side quest isn't so much about the final product, and really it's not even about doing something like this that's sort of fun and out there, even though that's a really nice perk. Really the whole goal of the art skill side quest is to build up our skills, and we did that really heavily with the first two stars, gathering reference and doing studies, and then taking the information we've digested and creating something new with that. I would highly recommend you do something along the lines of what we did here, even if you want to follow these steps exactly. Even if you are a 2D artist, I would highly recommend trying some kind of model making, whether that be in 3D software or in physical space like this. It does a lot for helping your brain understand the relationships of depth, form, and scale. And if you like this format of video, let me know, because I'd love to do this again in the future. It was fun to do something completely outside of what I've been working on normally in the main storyline. You can get my course Learn Character Design at learncharacterdesign.com. We have a new Bigos backpack over on Patreon at patreon.com slash bageldenizen. And bageldenizen is where you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. Thanks so much for watching, and have fun creating.